Only the terrifying humans dared to stand against the unstoppable Zorgan war machine as it consumed the galaxy in flames. Those spineless galactic council fools sit on their hands while the Zorgans enslave planet after planet. Ambassador Sirius slammed his fist on the table, his deep blue Norsican skin flushing purple with rage. Zephyr, his young aide, shifted nervously. Perhaps we could seek aid from the Eldari or Quatari. Surely they would not stand idle as... The Eldari? Sirius scoffed. Those isolationist snobs care nothing for the plight of lesser races, and the Quatari are too busy squabbling amongst themselves. No, we have no allies to turn to. An urgent ping interrupted them. Sirius activated the hollow display, his yellow eyes widening as he read the message. By the stars, the Zorgans have invaded Maluvia. The Council is gathering a defense fleet, but... His voice trailed off, the unspoken truth hanging in the air. Any help would arrive far too late. The peaceful Maluvians, known across the galaxy for their miraculous medical technology, would fall to Zorgan butchery long before reinforcements could reach them. Their once gleaming cities would be reduced to ashes, and the greatest minds of the age would fill Zorgon's slave pits or graves. Sirius clenched his jaw, shoulders sagging as if under a great weight. Was this how it ended? Were the Zorgans truly unstoppable? Or did one slim hope yet remain, a last desperate roll of the dice that might save Maluvia, and just maybe, the galaxy? The old ambassador turned to his aide, voice heavy with grim finality. Send word to Earth. Tell the human. Tell them we need their help. The console pinged again, drawing Sirius and Zephyr's attention from their dire musings. Sirius accessed the message, his brow furrowing in confusion as he read the sender's name. The United Terran Federation. I've only heard whispers about these humans. What could they possibly want with us? Zephyr leaned in, his curiosity piqued. I've heard stories about their resourcefulness and tenacity. Perhaps they've caught wind of Maluvia's plight. Sirius scanned the message, his skepticism evident in his tone. This Joshua Grant claims they wish to aid in Maluvia's defense. But what do we really know of these humans? Rumors paint them as a savage, warlike species, constantly at each other's throats. Zephyr, however, saw a glimmer of potential. But think of the tales of their ingenuity, their adaptability. If even half of what I've heard is true, they could be a valuable ally. We should at least hear what they have to say. Sirius sighed, weighing the options. With Maluvia's fate hanging in the balance, could they afford to turn away any offer of help, even from an unknown quantity like the humans? Reluctantly, he composed a reply, inviting Joshua Grant to a meeting to discuss the proposed assistance. When the human diplomat arrived, Sirius found himself taken aback by his appearance. Unlike the tall, lithe Norsicans, Joshua was compact and muscular, with pale skin and dark hair. Yet despite his alien features, he carried himself with a confident air as he greeted the ambassador. "'Thank you for agreeing to meet with me, Ambassador Sirius,' Joshua began, his voice steady and assured. I understand your reservations about accepting aid from a species you know little about, but I assure you, the UTF is committed to stopping the Zorgon threat. Sirius leaned forward. His interest peaked, despite his initial misgivings. And just how do you propose to do that? The Zorgons have cut through the defenses of far more advanced civilizations like a plasma torch through Durasteel. Joshua smiled, a glint of determination in his eye. We've been monitoring the Zorgans closely, studying their tactics and technology, and we've developed some specialized countermeasures of our own. With your permission, we can have a fleet of our most advanced warships in Maluvian space within a single rotation. Sirius's eyes widened at the speed of the proposed deployment. Impressive, but what makes you think your ships can fare any better against the Zorgons than those of the Galactic Council races? Our vessels are equipped with state-of-the-art shield technology designed to withstand even the Zorgon's plasma weaponry, Joshua explained, and our special forces units are trained in infiltration and sabotage. They can breach Zorgon ships and strike at critical systems from within. As Joshua laid out the details of the UTF's plan, 
Sirius found himself slowly warming to the idea. The humans clearly had capabilities he hadn't anticipated, and their willingness to step up where the Council had faltered was admirable. Perhaps, with the aid of these enigmatic Terrans, Maluvia stood a fighting chance after all. Zephyr, too, seemed heartened by the humans' words. As the meeting drew to a close, he turned to Sirius with a hopeful expression. Maybe... Maybe this is the lifeline we've been searching for. If the humans can truly do what they claim... As the battle unfolded in real time on the hollow display, Sirius and Zephyr watched in awe as the UTF fleet deftly outmaneuvered the Zorgon armada. The human ships, though fewer in number, seemed to anticipate every move their enemy made, their sleek hulls gracefully evading the onslaught of plasma fire. Look at the way they move, Zephyr marveled, his eyes glued to the screen. It's like they're reading the Zorgon's minds. Sirius nodded, unable to tear his gaze away from the display. Their coordination is unlike anything I've ever seen. How do they do it? As if on cue, Joshua Grant's face appeared on a secondary display, a look of determination etched upon his features. Ambassador Sirius, I wanted to give you an update on our progress. Sirius leaned forward, his full attention on the human diplomat. Please go ahead. Our special forces have successfully infiltrated several key Zorgon ships, Joshua reported, pride evident in his voice. They're working to disable the enemy's weapons and engines from within. Zephyr shook his head in disbelief. Your soldiers are incredibly brave, risking their lives for a species they've never even encountered. Joshua smiled, a glint of something unreadable in his eye. That's the thing about humans, Zephyr. We have a saying back on Earth. All it takes for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. We couldn't stand by and watch the Zorgons destroy another innocent civilization. Sirius felt a newfound respect for these enigmatic humans blossoming within him. Your people are truly remarkable, Joshua, but I must ask, how are your ships able to predict the Zorgons' every move? The human's smile widened, a touch of pride creeping into his voice. That would be thanks to Athena, our most advanced AI system. She's been analyzing the Zorgon's tactics and coordinating our fleet's movements to maximize our effectiveness. Zephyr's eyes widened, his voice filled with awe. An AI that can outsmart the Zorgons? That's... that's incredible. Joshua chuckled, the sound tinged with a hint of something darker. Athena is just one of the many technological marvels the UTF has developed, but I assure you, She's more than a match for the Zorgons. As the conversation continued, Sirius found himself marveling at the depth of human ingenuity and resolve. In the face of an overwhelming threat, they had not only stepped up to defend a complete stranger, but had done so with a level of skill and technology that rivaled the most advanced civilizations in the galaxy. Perhaps, he mused, there was more to these humans than met the eye, and if they could truly turn the tide against the Zorgons... Sirius's fingers flew across the console, his eyes widening as he read the distress call from Zephyria. He turned to Zephyr, his voice tight with urgency. The Zorgons have launched an attack on Zephyria. They're trying to catch us off guard while we're focused on Maluvia. Zephyr's face paled, his voice trembling. But the Zephyrians, uh, they have no defenses. They're a peaceful people focused on agriculture. They won't stand a chance against the Zorgans. Sirius nodded grimly, already opening a channel to Joshua Grant. The human's face appeared on the screen, his brow furrowed with concentration. Joshua, we have a situation. The Zorgans are attacking Zephyria. We need to... I'm already on it, Joshua interrupted, his fingers flying over his own console. I'm dispatching a squadron of our AI drones to Zephyria now. Sirius blinked in surprise. AI drones, but your fleet is already engaged at Maluvia. How can you possibly defend both planets? Joshua smiled, a hint of pride in his voice. We've been holding these drones in reserve. They're equipped with the same Athena AI that's been coordinating our fleet. They can operate independently, adapt to the Zorgon's tactics in real time. Zephyr leaned forward, his eyes wide with awe. Autonomous AI drones? That's... that's incredible. Joshua nodded, his attention already back on his console. 
Athena initiate Zephyria defense protocol. Authorization grant Alpha 7. On the view screen, Sirius and Zephyr watched as a swarm of sleek silver drones detached from the UTF fleet, streaking towards Zephyria at impossible speeds. As the drones entered Zephyria's orbit, the Zorgan fleet came into view. The hulking enemy ships hung in space like predators, their plasma cannons already glowing with deadly intent. But the drones did not hesitate. They swarmed the Zorgan fleet, moving with a fluid grace that belied their mechanical nature. Plasma fire erupted from the enemy ships, but the drones wove and dodged, always a hair's breadth ahead of the deadly blasts. And then as one the drones struck. Precise beams of concentrated energy lanced out, targeting the Zorgan ship's engines, weapon systems, shield generators. The enemy vessels shuddered under the onslaught, their hulls buckling and sparking. Sirius and Zephyr watched, transfixed, as the drones pressed their advantage. In mere minutes the once fearsome Zorgon fleet was reduced to a collection of drifting, powerless hulks. Joshua's voice broke the stunned silence. Zephyria is secure. The Zorgon fleet is in full retreat. Sirius shook his head in disbelief. I... I can hardly believe it. Your drones, they... they made it look easy. Joshua chuckled, but there was a hint of something darker in his voice. Easy? No, but effective. We humans have learned the hard way that sometimes the only way to protect the innocent is to be better at violence than those who would do them harm. Zephyr nodded slowly, a newfound respect dawning in his eyes. And at Maluvia, how goes the battle there? Joshua's smile widened. See for yourself. The view screen shifted, showing the space above Maluvia. The UTF fleet battered but unbroken hung in formation, while the remnants of the Zorgon Armada drifted listlessly, their weapons silent and their engines dark. As Sirius and Zephyr watched, the Zorgon ships began to blink with the telltale signs of surrender, one by one. It's over, Joshua said softly. Maluvia is safe, Zephyria is safe, the Zorgons have been defeated. Sirius felt a lump form in his throat, his eyes stinging with sudden emotion. In a single day these humans had accomplished what the Galactic Council had deemed impossible. They had stood against the Zorgons and emerged victorious, not just once, but twice. And they had done it with a skill and technological prowess that defied belief. AI drones, advanced shield technology, special forces trained in infiltration and sabotage. The humans wielded these tools with a mastery that spoke of a long and bloody history of conflict. But they had also shown a compassion and selflessness that belied their violent reputation. They had risked their lives, their ships, for a species they barely knew simply because it was the right thing to do. Sirius turned to Zephyr, his voice thick with emotion. I think... I think we may have badly misjudged these humans. As the dust settled from the monumental victories at Maluvia and Zephyria, Sirius and Zephyr found themselves aboard the USS Odyssey, the gleaming flagship of the United Terran Federation. The sleek corridors and advanced technology of the human vessel were a stark contrast to the utilitarian design of their own ships. Joshua Grant greeted them warmly as they entered the conference room, flanked by a team of human specialists. Ambassador Sirius, Zephyr, welcome aboard the Odyssey. I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Liam Nichols and Colonel Sarah Thompson. Dr. Nichols, a slender man with keen eyes, nodded in greeting. It's a pleasure to meet you both. I've been looking forward to discussing the intricacies of our Athena AI system with you. Colonel Thompson, a muscular woman with close-cropped hair, offered a firm handshake. And I'm eager to share some insights into the training and capabilities of our special forces units. As the group settled around the conference table, Dr. Nichols launched into a detailed explanation of Athena. You see, Athena is far more than a simple computer program. She's a highly advanced, self-learning system capable of analyzing and adapting to enemy tactics in real time. Sirius leaned forward, his interest piqued. How long have you been developing this technology? For years, Dr. Nichols replied. We've always known that the Zorgans or other hostile species could pose a significant threat. 
Athena was designed to give us an edge in any potential conflict. Colonel Thompson chimed in, and it's not just our technology that sets us apart. Our special forces undergo rigorous training and are equipped with the most advanced gear available. They're able to operate effectively in any environment against any adversary. Zephyr, his eyes wide with admiration, asked, How do you foster such adaptability in your military? Innovation and adaptability are at the core of our military doctrine, Colonel Thompson explained. We're constantly pushing ourselves to stay ahead of potential threats. It's what allows us to respond quickly and effectively to situations like Maluvia and Zephyria. As the debriefing continued, Sirius and Zephyr found their respect for the humans growing with each revelation. It was becoming clear that the UTF's success was not just a result of advanced technology, but also a product of their unique mindset and approach to problem-solving. Joshua, sensing their growing admiration, extended an invitation. Ambassador Sirius, Zephyr, I'd like to invite you to visit Earth. I believe there's much you could learn from our culture and society, and fostering a strong relationship between the Galactic Council and the UTF could be key to maintaining peace and stability in the galaxy. Sirius and Zephyr exchanged a glance, their decision made. We would be honored to accept your invitation, Joshua, Sirius replied. It's clear that we have much to learn from your remarkable species. As the meeting drew to a close, Sirius and Zephyr couldn't help but reflect on how their perception of humans had changed. Once dismissed as primitive and violent, the humans had proven themselves to be a force for good in the galaxy, with a level of technological prowess and strategic thinking that rivaled the most advanced civilizations. As their shuttle descended through Earth's atmosphere, Sirius and Zephyr gazed out the viewport in awe at the sprawling metropolis of New Geneva. Gleaming skyscrapers pierced the clouds, their sleek lines and graceful curves unlike anything they had seen before. Amidst the urban landscape, vibrant swathes of green space wove between the buildings, trees and gardens thriving in the heart of the city. The shuttle alighted gently on a landing pad, where a delegation of human leaders awaited them. President Michael Novak, a tall man with salt and pepper hair and a warm smile, stepped forward to greet them. Beside him stood Amanda Chen, the Secretary of Interstellar Relations, her dark eyes sparkling with intelligence. Welcome to Earth, Ambassador Sirius Zephyr, President Novak said, clasping their hands in turn. It's an honor to host you here in New Geneva. As they walked into the city, Sirius and Zephyr couldn't help but marvel at the technology that surrounded them. High-speed maglev trains whisked passengers from one end of the city to the other in mere minutes. Holograms flashed news and advertisements in dazzling colors. And everywhere they looked, humans of all shapes, sizes, and colors went about their business, a testament to the diversity of this remarkable species. I must admit I'm impressed, Sirius said as they strolled through a park, the scent of blooming flowers filling the air. Your cities are unlike anything I've seen before, such a perfect blend of technology and nature. Amanda Chen smiled. It's taken centuries of trial and error to achieve this balance, but we've learned that for a society to thrive, it must work in harmony with its environment, not against it. That evening, at a state dinner held in their honor, Sirius and Zephyr found themselves engaged in conversation with a fascinating array of human experts. Dr. Eliza Nakamura, a xenobiologist, captivated them with her insights into Zorgon physiology and psychology. The Zorgons evolved on a high-gravity world, she explained, her eyes alight with passion for her subject. As a result, their bodies are incredibly dense and muscular, but this also means they have difficulty adapting to rapid changes in environment, a weakness perhaps that could be exploited. Sirius leaned forward, intrigued. Please tell us more. As the evening wore on, Sirius and Zephyr soaked in the history and culture of this remarkable species. They learned of the great conflicts that had nearly torn humanity apart, and the even greater triumphs that had united them. They heard stories of the first colonies on Mars, the discovery of faster-than-light travel, the formation of the United Terran Federation. And through it all one theme emerged— the indomitable human spirit, the refusal to surrender in the face of adversity, 
the constant drive to explore, to discover, to reach for the stars. As the dinner drew to a close, President Novak took Sirius and Zephyr aside. In a quiet corner of the room, he spoke to them earnestly. Ambassador Sirius, Zephyr, I'll be frank. The Zorgan threat is the greatest challenge the galaxy has ever faced, but I believe that together, the UTF and the Galactic Council can meet this challenge head-on. We can defeat the Zorgans and usher in a new era of peace and cooperation. Sirius, who had once been so sceptical of humanity, found himself nodding in agreement. He saw now the true strength of this species, not just in their technology or their military might, but in their spirit, their resilience, their unshakable moral compass. You're right, President Novak, he said, his voice ringing with conviction. The Galactic Council has been blind for too long, but no more. It's time we stood together, humans and Nausicans, Eldari and Quatari, all the free peoples of the galaxy. It's time we made our stand against tyranny. Back on the Galactic Council's headquarters, Sirius and Zephyr stood before the assembled representatives, their voices ringing with conviction as they recounted their experiences on Earth. The vast chamber hummed with the murmurs of a hundred different species, each digesting the implications of the humans' remarkable achievements. The humans are not just technologically advanced, Sirius declared, his yellow eyes scanning the crowd. They possess a spirit of innovation, a drive to explore and discover, that sets them apart from any other species we have encountered. Zephyr nodded in agreement, his voice filled with admiration. In the face of the Zorgan threat, the humans did not hesitate to stand with us, to risk their lives for a species they had never even met. Their bravery and selflessness are a testament to their character. But as Sirius and Zephyr spoke, they could see the doubt and uncertainty on the faces of some of the council members. A tall, spindly Quatari representative rose from his seat, his multifaceted eyes glinting with suspicion. The humans' actions are indeed impressive, he said, his voice a reedy whisper. But can we trust a species with such advanced weaponry? What if they turn their aggression towards us once the Zorgon threat is eliminated? The humans have proven themselves to be true allies, the voice said, and Sirius turned to see a tall, ethereal figure gliding towards the centre of the chamber. The Eldari representative, Lysandria, moved with a grace that seemed to defy gravity, her translucent skin shimmering in the light. A hush fell over the council as Lysandria spoke, her voice a melodic whisper that seemed to fill the chamber. The Eldari have watched the humans closely, and we have seen the depth of their courage and the strength of their resolve. They are a young species, yes, but they possess a wisdom beyond their years. Lysandria turned to face Sirius and Zephyr, her silver eyes boring into theirs. The Eldari have a long history with the Zorgans, she said, her voice heavy with the weight of centuries. We fought them long ago, when they first emerged as a threat to the galaxy. We know the depths of their cruelty, the relentlessness of their aggression. The chamber erupted into a cacophony of voices, some raised in support of Lysandria's words, others in opposition. But through the chaos, Sirius could feel a glimmer of hope beginning to take root in his heart. He turned to Zephyr, his voice low and urgent. This is it, he said, his eyes shining with determination. This is our chance to forge a new alliance, to bring the galaxy together against the Zorgan threat. With the humans and the Eldari by our side, we can do this. We can win. As the debate raged on in the Galactic Council chambers, Sirius's communicator chimed with an urgent message. He glanced at Zephyr, who nodded, and the two stepped out into the hallway. Joshua Grant's face appeared on the screen, his expression grim. Ambassador Sirius Zephyr, I apologize for the interruption, but we've uncovered critical intelligence about the Zorgan's next move. Sirius leaned in, his brow furrowed. What have you learned? Our spy network has discovered that the Zorgons are planning a massive offensive on the Quaxar system, Joshua explained. They're after the hyperspace nexus there. If they gain control of it, they'll have access to the entire galaxy. Zephyr's eyes widened. By the stars, guys, we can't let that happen. Joshua nodded. Agreed. 
We've been working on a plan to counter this offensive, but we need the help of the Galactic Council and the Eldari to succeed. Sirius frowned. What does this plan involve? A coordinated strike on key Zorgan supply lines and command centers, Joshua said. We'll need to combine forces, human, Eldari, and Council, to hit them hard and fast. Zephyr turned to Sirius. We have to bring this to the Council immediately. There's no time to lose. The two ambassadors rushed back into the chambers, interrupting the ongoing debate. Sirius quickly outlined the situation, his voice filled with urgency. Esteemed members of the Council, the time for deliberation is over, he declared. We must act now to prevent the Zorgans from gaining a foothold in the Quaxar system. If they succeed, the entire galaxy will be at risk. Lysandria, the Eldari representative, rose from her seat. The Eldari stand with the humans and the Council in this matter, she said, her voice ringing with authority. We pledge our support in the coming battle. As the Council began mobilizing its forces and coordinating with the UTF and Eldari, Sirius and Zephyr found themselves reflecting on the incredible journey that had brought them to this point. To think just a short time ago we dismissed the humans as primitive and violent, Sirius mused, and now they've become our greatest allies and hope in the fight against the Zorgans. Zephyr nodded. It's not just their technology or military prowess that sets them apart, he said. It's their indomitable spirit, their willingness to stand up for what's right, no matter the odds. As the combined fleet of human Eldari and council ships set out for the Quaxar system, Sirius and Zephyr knew that the fate of the galaxy hung in the balance, but with the humans by their side, they felt a glimmer of hope that they could defeat the Zorgons and bring lasting peace to the universe. As the combined fleet of human Eldari and council ships emerged from hyperspace on the fringes of the Quaxar system, Sirius and Zephyr stood on the bridge of the USS Odyssey, their eyes fixed on the view screen. The sight that greeted them was one of chaos and destruction, as the Zorgon Armada swarmed around the system's planets like a plague of locusts, their ships bristling with weapons and their intentions clear. By the stars, Zephyr whispered, his voice tinged with a mix of awe and horror. I've never seen anything like it. Sirius nodded grimly, his hands clenching into fists at his sides. The Zorgans have always been a formidable foe, but this... This is something else entirely. As if on cue, the Zorgan ships began to turn towards the Allied fleet, their weapons powering up with an ominous hum. But before they could fire, a swarm of UTF fighters streaked past the Odyssey's viewport, their sleek forms darting and weaving through the enemy formation with incredible speed and agility. Those must be Commander Reese's pilots, Sirius said, his eyes widening as he watched the human fighters engage the Zorgon ships. I've heard stories about their skill, but to see it in person... Zephyr could only nod in agreement, his gaze transfixed by the unfolding spectacle. The human pilots moved like a well-oiled machine, their ships dancing around the enemy fire with a grace that belied their deadly purpose. One by one, the Zorgon fighters fell to the UTF's onslaught, their hulls rupturing and their crews spilling out into the cold vacuum of space. But even as the UTF fighters pressed their advantage, the Zorgon capital ships began to move into position, their massive forms casting long shadows across the battlefield. Sirius felt a chill run down his spine as he realized the true scope of the enemy's power, and he found himself wondering if even the combined might of the Allied forces would be enough to stop them. As if sensing his thoughts, Joshua Grant stepped up beside him, his face set in a grim mask of determination. Don't worry, Ambassador, he said, his voice calm and assured. We've got a few surprises in store for the Zorgans. As he spoke, a series of explosions rocked the Zorgan lines, and Sirius watched in amazement as a group of UTF shuttles materialized out of nowhere, their cloaking devices shimmering and fading as they disgorged their cargo of human special forces onto the enemy ships. Colonel Thompson's troops, Joshua explained, a hint of pride creeping into his voice. They're equipped with the latest in stealth technology and close-quarters combat gear. They'll be wreaking havoc on the Zorgan command centers and supply depots, cutting off their ability to coordinate and resupply. 
Sirius shook his head in wonder, marvelling at the audacity and ingenuity of the human plan. But even as he watched the UTF forces press their attack, a sudden sense of unease began to creep over him, a feeling that something was not quite right. And then he saw it, rising up from behind the Zorgon lines like a malevolent sun, a massive spherical structure began to take shape, its surface bristling with weapons and its form pulsing with an eerie, sickly light. Sirius felt his blood run cold as he realized what he was seeing, and he heard Zephyr gasp in horror beside him. A super laser, Joshua whispered, his voice tight with tension. The Zorgons must have been working on it in secret, waiting for the right moment to unleash it. Sirius watched in helpless terror as the superlaser began to power up, its targeting systems locking onto the nearest planet with a chilling finality. He knew that if that weapon was allowed to fire, it would mean the end of not just the Quaxar system, but the entire galaxy. But even as despair threatened to overwhelm him, he saw a flurry of activity on the Odyssey's bridge, as the human crew sprang into action with a speed and efficiency that left him breathless. He watched as they huddled around their consoles, their fingers flying over the controls as they worked to come up with a plan to stop the superlaser before it could fire. Athena, run a full analysis of the superlaser's structure and power systems, Joshua barked, his voice cutting through the chaos like a knife. We need to find a weakness, and fast. For a moment there was silence on the bridge, broken only by the soft beeping of the ship's computers, and then a smooth feminine voice filled the air, and Sirius realized with a start that it was the voice of the Athena AI. Analysis complete, Athena said, her tone calm and measured. The superlaser's power core is located in the center of the structure, protected by multiple layers of shielding and defensive systems. However, there is a small vulnerability in the cooling system that could be exploited to cause a chain reaction and destroy the weapon from within. Joshua nodded, his face set in a grim mask of determination. Then that's our target. We'll need to send in a team to plant explosives at the core and then get the hell out before it blows. Sirius felt a sudden surge of hope rising in his chest, but it was tempered by a sense of trepidation. He knew that any mission to infiltrate the super laser would be incredibly dangerous and that the chances of success were slim at best. But as he watched the human soldiers gear up and prepare to embark on their desperate mission, he realized that they were not doing it for glory or personal gain, but for the sake of the entire galaxy. They were willing to risk their lives, to make the ultimate sacrifice in order to stop the Zorgons and protect the innocent. And in that moment, Sirius realized that he had been wrong about the humans. They were not just another species, not just another ally in the fight against the Zorgons. They were something more, something special. They were the guardians of the galaxy, the defenders of the weak and the innocent, and as he watched them charge into battle, their faces set with grim determination and their hearts filled with courage, he knew that he would never forget this moment, never forget the sacrifices they had made. For in the end, it was the humans who had saved them all, the humans who had stood against the darkness and the chaos and the destruction and emerged victorious, and Sirius knew that he would always be grateful for that, always remember the day when the humans had become the heroes of the galaxy. In the wake of the hard-fought victory in the Quaxar system, the Galactic Council gathered to chart a course for the future. Sirius and Zephyr took center stage, their voices ringing with conviction as they recounted the valor and sacrifice of the human soldiers who had turned the tide against the Zorgons. The humans have proven themselves true allies, Sirius declared, his yellow eyes blazing with intensity. They stood with us in our darkest hour, risking everything to defend the innocent and protect the galaxy. We must forge a lasting alliance with them, one that will ensure peace and stability for generations to come. Zephyr nodded in agreement, his voice thick with emotion, as he spoke of the bravery he had witnessed firsthand. I saw human soldiers charge into the face of certain death, never hesitating, never faltering. They fought not for glory or conquest, but for the sake of those who could not fight for themselves. We owe them a debt that can never be repaid. As the debate wore on, a new figure entered the chamber. Amanda Chen, the UTF Secretary of Interstellar Relations. 
Her face was grave as she addressed the gathered delegates. "'I come bearing news that will shake the very foundations of this alliance,' she said, her voice heavy with sorrow. "'It has come to light that a rogue faction within the UTF, led by General Alexander Graves, has been developing a weapon of unimaginable destructive power. They call it Prometheus, and it is designed to eradicate the Zorgans from the face of the galaxy.' Kay's stunned silence fell over the chamber as Chen's words sank in. Then pandemonium erupted as delegates shouted over one another, some in horror, others in grim approval. And what of the countless lives the Zorgons have taken? countered a Quatari delegate, his multifaceted eyes flashing with anger. How many more must die before we put an end to their threat once and for all? As the debate raged on, Sirius and Zephyr found themselves torn. They had seen the cruelty of the Zorgans firsthand, had watched them slaughter innocents and raise worlds without mercy. And yet, the thought of wiping out an entire species, even one as vicious as the Zorgons, filled them with a profound sense of unease. In the end, they came to a wrenching decision. With heavy hearts, they informed the Council of their intention to resign their posts and return to their homeworld, unable to be party to an alliance that would consider the use of such a monstrous weapon. As they prepared to depart, they sought out Joshua Grant, the human diplomat who had become a trusted friend and confidant. They found him in his quarters, his face lined with worry and fatigue. I cannot believe it has come to this, Joshua said, his voice barely above a whisper. The very thing that made us strong, our ingenuity and our resolve, now threatens to be our undoing. Sirius placed a hand on Joshua's shoulder, his voice heavy with sympathy. You are not alone in your doubts, my friend. I have seen the best of humanity, and I know that this is not who you are. Joshua nodded, his jaw tightening with determination. I will not let Prometheus be our legacy. I will resign my commission and return to Earth. I will tell the people the truth about what has been done in their name. And I will not rest until this abomination is destroyed. With a final embrace, Sirius and Zephyr bid farewell to Joshua, and the other humans they had come to know and admire. As their ship pushed out through the void, they whispered a quiet prayer to the stars, hoping that the bonds forged in battle would not be broken by the shadows of ambition and fear. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.